All right, so I'm going to talk to you about how drones should not be used in war. Um, let's go over what types of drones are typically found in. Um, so the General Atomics MQ-1 Predator is the most famous un uh, unmanned aerial, aerial vehicle, which basically means drones are just aircraft without human pilots on board. And this can mean anything from uh, reconnaissance vehicles to unmanned crop dusters. But more specifically, I want to talk about predator or drones that carry up like missiles or um, warheads that um, can damage the vehicles or buildings and um, ultimately have negative side effects. Um, so three um, points that I want to talk about are how first we are the drones kill without accuracy. Um, second is that the mental state of not just the operators but also civilians. And last, um, like all around just world warfare and future development. Um, so first, uh, in October this year, Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch both called the United, on the United States to be held accountable for civilian lives lost in Pakistan and Yemen because of drone attacks on perceived threats. Um, basically, uh, the professor Maja Zaf the Profe professor Maja Zafuis of Manchester University pointed out that faith in precision bombing requires an under examination of the actual practicalities of precision bombing and the ways in which precision has been defined. The reality is that there is no such thing as a guaranteed accurate airstrike. While laser guided weapons are without a doubt much more accurate, the myth of guaranteed precision is just a myth. Even under test conditions, only 50% of weapons are expected to hit within their circular error of probability. Once the blast radius of weapons is taken into account and indeed how such systems can be affected by things as the weather, it is clear that precision cannot be measured by any means. Um, also, War Beyond World has been raising funds and renting billboards in, oppo in opposition to the war, and um, they're not stopping creating these billboards, and they want um, to get the message across that basically the U.S. is killing civilians, and it's not, um, I mean, it's not okay. Um, for the second mental state, uh, I want to go over the civilian's point of view. Like, imagine just being at home and walking outside, and it's a beautiful day. You know, you might want to go out and do something with your friends, but you can't because of the drone strikes. And just like these clear blue skies don't even mean happiness anymore. It's like a sign of death. Um, and it, it becomes, and Hamilio Ali, a drone refugee, said, life became unbearable, especially at night. He said that you don't know who is killing you. Um, also, There are many drone operators that have emotional and psychological stress. A study from the U.S. Air Force's so School of Aerospace Medicine and Department of Neuro Neuro Neuropsychiatry, Neuropsychiatry found that drone pilots, in addition to witnessing traumatic combat and experiences, face several unique problems. Lack of a clear demarcate. Demar demar mm. There's lack of a clear understanding between home life and um, combat. Uh, they have extremely long hours with monotonous work and low staffing. Um, there is also, according to a study of 709 drone pilots by the Armed Forces Health Surveillance Center, approximately 8.2% reported at least one adverse mental health outcome, most commonly disorders related to adjusting to re-entry into civilian society, depression, and relationship problems. Um, moving on to our next topic, the all-around total war and future development. Um, basically, there's a special report from Ben Emerson. He said that there needs to be more transparency when it comes to how drones are used. Um, he says a world where multiple states use such weapons in secrecy is a less secure world. And obviously you can... Um, come to terms with like, yeah, if there is a bunch of people making drones, 
then what? who's to say that they're not going to unleash them on each other? Um, a drone policy came back to haunt the U.S. once it loses its current near monopoly in the drone technology. China and Iran are already working on military drones, and Russia is likely to be like right underneath them. So it's super close, and Russia could repeat the words used by Russia could simply repeat the, what the U.S. is doing by targeting people and killing um, civilians that they don't, even though they're targeting certain people, they could be killing civilians as well. Um, also, analysts have often argued that the drone strikes create radicals, with an unofficial rule of thumb suggesting that each drone strike produces about 10 more terrorists. Um, he points out, while such formulas remain speculation, it's clear that you can see protests in the street with people chanting, death to America. There was also a Yemen doctor who tweeted, President Obama, if you are any children, if you kill any children with drone strikes, we will come after you and we will have nothing to do with the Al-Qaeda. And that creates the kind of environment sympathetic towards terrorists. So this risk, this idea of if, like drones being risk-free and you know, more accurate isn't really the case. And I think that um, overall we need to start evaluating um, why we're really in the war and how we can do better.